Mibruel Balthazar had no idea that his life was about to change when he received an invitation to watch the Hope for Africa series. Can we put our hands together once again for our organist? Thank you, Michael Rigby. Fantastic. It's always beautiful, isn't it, to hear the organ played so well. So uh, thank you. That's a real treat for us today. And so much um, has been a treat today, hasn't it? Have you been blessed? Amen. We've, we've received the spiritual feast and, of course, the physical feast. Are you fi filled to the brim with, from lunch? Thank you to our special hospitality team. They've done a tremendous work. Um, hands together for them. It's been a lot of work. Thank you, Claudia. I don't know if you can hear us or see us over in the kitchen on TV, but thank you so much. 
Um, no doubt over lunch you would have made a lot of reconnections um, and new connections amongst yourselves. I've, I've made some new connections today and the smiles on everyone's faces tell us that. It's wonderful to come together, isn't it, as a big family, um, to fellowship and worship and to serve our great and awesome God that we actually have and celebrate 50 years of God's amazing grace. What do you say? Amen. Mm. It's a time of reflection of God's goodness and a reminder to keep us basking in God's presence. My name is Danuta Stockwell. I'm the newest kid on the block, you could probably say almost, <laughs> here at Hillview. I'm the associate pastor for those who don't know me. I've been here since middle of last year and it's an absolute joy and privilege to serve the church here together with Pastor Les. Um, since the first day that my husband and I arrived here middle of last year, Hillview has embraced us with warm loving, amazingly, massively warm, open arms of love from the very first day. And it's given us a place to belong, a place to call home. Um, and it means so much. A trait that I've observed also, it's been part of the DNA of Hillview Church, the place where connections are made and strong relationships are built. That is Hillview Church. Since, it a pla in, since it's a place that is filled with the presence of God and God's people, we are connected deeply to our Lord and Saviour. And by God's grace, we want to always reflect the love of Jesus and who God is and all that he asks us to be and to do. So this afternoon, the timeline that you would have received in your program, some of you would actually be looking at it, I can see already at the moment as well, um, shows that Hillview has been a strong family church for 50 years, celebrating today as we know. And some of the previous pastors who have served at Hillview Church mentioned this. If you haven't yet read what some of them have said, I, put, I pulled out a few key, key lines that jumped out at me. A family-orientated church. A channel of God's love and grace. A welcoming church. A truly family church. Truly a family church. Very loving and caring church. Mission-minded family of God, church with active Hillview youth. And so this afternoon's program will take us down memory lane. And it's also going to take us um, and we're going to have a glimpse of what Hillview Church is doing now and what we hope to do into the future. And as we see that, may we see God's amazing grace come through in every way because we have a great God. Would you bow your heads with me as I pray, please? Precious Lord God, eternal heavenly Father, we give you all glory and praise for the amazing God that you are and the amazing grace that you continue to shower us with in huge and abundant ways. Lord, may we never take your grace, your love for granted, but may we instead not only glorify you, but may we respond by responding to your call to be the character of Jesus to everyone that we meet in every place that we are. Um, and whenever we are in the presence of people, may we remember that we are always in your presence and we are to be drawn close to you and draw others close to you. So we invite you to be um, here with us as we share because you're a great and awesome God. And today we want to glorify you for our 50 years of celebration. For we pray these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Very good afternoon to one and all. I'd like to invite the men to now come up. It's time for us to sing the selected item. There are those that would have practiced the song. There are those that might know the song. So feel free to join and together we will celebrate the goodness of God through song. The title of the song, The Joy of the Lord is My Strength.
Can I just add my voice and greet you all this afternoon? From morning till now, one of the things, thoughts that has been coming to my mind, this is a joyous occasion, isn't it? But ever so often, I glance at the congregation, and I'm not seeing joy on your faces. I've not made up my mind yet what I'm seeing, but sometimes it's not always joy. It's a joyous occasion. We're celebrating God's goodness. Maybe, maybe it's a cultural thing, like Lynn said. <laughs> maybe people celebrate differently. I'm looking. Thanks, Bev. I see that smile and laughter. It's a joyous occasion. Can I remind one and all, we are here to be happy in the Lord. Not only is it a joyous occasion, but it is also a solemn occasion. I sat in front of um, Cheryl, and when the photos were being beamed, oh, there's so-and-so, there's so-and-so, oh, my goodness, there's so-and-so. And I thought, she knows how to do church, <laughs> knows how to celebrate. It's not only a joyous occasion, but it is also a solemn occasion. Over the years, Hillview Church has prioritized prayer. Prayer has played an integral part at Hillview Church. From the very beginnings when the land was purchased and throughout the various building projects, prayer has been the foundation of Hillview Life. And those of you who know me well know that I will say your amen for you. Amen. Prayer has been an integral part at Hillview Church. I'm going to invite two women, Celia and Asmitra. Celia represents a group um, that has been associated with, with Hillview Prayer. I've not seen Asmitra. Oh, there you are. Come on up front, ladies. Um, I'll start with, um, with Celia. There was a time, just grab a mic. There was a time at Hillview Church. Um, for those of you that might know, um, Celia and Asmitra have been at Hillview Church. How many years have you been at Hillview Church now? Ay, ay, ay. Um, <clears throat> Not enough. I, I, I don't know, more than 15, I think. There you go. Yep. Asmitra? Well, compared to that, I'm still newbie. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Hillview Church. I'm going to start with Celia. There was a time when Hillview Church, I think a group of you felt something needed to be done differently. You needed something a little bit more, and you started a prayer ministry in the morning. Tell me a little bit about that. All right. Well, there's some people here who were in it all the way long, weren't they, Bev? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I was inspired by some prayer stories that I listened to, and I knew what God could do. And so I thought to myself, why don't we do it? I felt very impressed that we needed to um, pray every day. And so I got up here in front of the church and told everyone I was coming tomorrow and who else was coming. So... Mm. And I remember driving along that day in the dark, thinking, am I going to be there by myself? And uh, I drove up this driveway and I saw the lights coming through that window over there and I thought, someone else is here! <laughs> yeah. It was actually a very exciting time, just watching what God was doing. So, yeah, we had a 5.30 a.m. prayer group. Hey, man, you have to let the church know. How long did that go for? 5.30 in the morning. How many of you are early risers? Raise your hand if you're a morning person. Raise your hand if you start waking up at about, function at about 11 or 12. No? <laughs> There's a few hands. So how long did that go for? How many years? That went for five years every morning. So God five helped us. Between five? It was five years. Uh, we were mostly here. And then after that, it moved to a house. And then it went on. Amazing. On I'm hearing five years. I'm hearing seven yeah. years. Can you imagine? Seven years of dedication. And I've been reliably informed. Um, I witnessed this. There was a power. There was growth due to prayer. So we praise the mm. Lord about that. When you think of prayer, do you have any Bible, go-to Bible texts that just um, yeah, bring you closer to God? Is there a Bible text that you'd like to share maybe with Hillview? No, and I Jesus do today? love a lot of Bible texts. So how I share one, I'm not sure. But I do love Isaiah 55 where it says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come mm. to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. yes. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. And I just go, that is my Jesus. Amen. Because his salvation is free and he is so ready to fill us up. And I don't know, I don't know, Pastor Liz, there's a lot of Bible ones. I like um, 
that I like the ones where Jesus says he will do anything that we ask. Amen. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Asmitra, one of the things when I think about you, um, I think of the 10 days of prayer. That is something that you've introduced at Hillview and you're looking to keep going. Tell us a little bit about your motivation for that, for the 10 days of prayer. Look, I came here, um, I'm not going to answer that right away, That's okay. uh, Pastor Les, but we, we came, we moved, to Sid we moved from Sydney and we came here and we found Hillview and I... And they said, oh, there is a prayer meeting at 6 o'clock. <laughs> and it's Celia. And um, since then, it's been a lot of kind of struggling. I don't know. I just kind of forget that moment, Celia. It's just hard to erase from a moment at 6 o'clock in the morning with Pastor Danny as well. And it's a lot of prayer. And, and now I look back. How God has been faithful. Mm. And now I look at you as a principal. Wow. Indeed, God is faithful. Indeed, God is there. Indeed, God is answered each and every one of our prayer. It's a bit hard to imagine back then, in 2021, but now here in 2022, God has done amazingly through that prayer. And, okay, now I'm going to respond to that. <laughs> I'm sorry for taking my time. Um, it's a very big shoes to fill when Celia said, Asmitra, continue the prayer, me, the prayer team. It's a very big heart because I have to work and I have to rush in the morning to keep the kids get out the door to school. So it's a bit hard to continue that uh, six o'clock prayer. And I'm sorry, Lord, we haven't mm. been doing it, but it's been a teamwork. It's been a teamwork. And then we decided, look, I... I I do notice, and I'd like to acknowledge for Beth as well, uh, is trying to do the Friday morning at 6 o'clock, and then thank you for that. But we have, we thought that we might think about other things else, and that's what we come up with, 10 days of prayer. Mm. And that favorite pastor I think you're referring to is Pastor Goya. Mm. And another one is Melody Mason. It's one of my favorite as well, and he said, start your day with prayer. And I thought to myself, let's start our year with prayer. And that's what we say, we're going to do 10 days of prayer. We're going to commit our life to the Lord in the beginning of the year to submit to his wills, to seek his guidance and his presence as we step into the new year. We're going to take God with us. And not, not only us individually, but we as a church. And therefore, the 10 days of prayer is established that all of Thank us you. is going to unite to seek God's presence, to lead us in each and every day of the another 365 years of our life. Thank you, Asmitra. Thank you for focusing on prayer and starting the year with prayer. Can we say an, an, another amen to the prayer warriors? Thank you for being um, who you are in terms of with regards to prayer. And may the Lord continue to bless you as he blesses all of us as we journey together, bringing hope and encouragement to everybody else. Amen. Amen. Another key aspect of, of Hillview Church that just resonates and permeates everything that has been said is the sense of community. I don't know about you, but from Sabbath school, we, we saw how um, we've got our hands in many different little pockets as a church. And what a blessing it is to be involved in community and, 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 and our, our, other people's lives. Hillview Church has sought ways to be involved in the community. And I resonate with that. So I'm going to call on, on Theo, who's the current manager at the op shop. And I'll call Bev, who's a volunteer as well. I might just talk first. You'll talk first? Yeah. Yeah. Radio. That's okay. I've got this master. That's all right. <laughs> Can I just ask Alison up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's okay. Come up, Trita. So I thought I'd just start with uh, how Alison and I become into the church here. So currently I'm the op shop manager. Um, Alison and I actually got introduced to the church through the Hillview um, showground, did a health tent, an expo down there. And um, Alison wrote our names down for the expo tent. And then after that, a pastor kept knocking on our door. And he kept on dropping DVDs off. And it took about two years before I actually got to meet this guy because I, I just tried to avoid him, you know, stay late at work and everything like that. And eventually, um, 
he said, look, come to a Christmas program. We come to a Christmas program. And then the Pathfinder started, so we joined Pathfinders with the boys, right, Dar? Yep. And uh, I was actually the oldest Pathfinder. I was 42 years old. <laughs> Glenn Rigby was the leader, wherever Glenn is. So he looked after me then, and that's how I come in the church. So that's how we ended up. So never undermine the, the value or mission work that this church takes out in the community. So I thought I just wanted to share that with you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sweetheart. Yeah. So I'm just going to share about the, um, the op shop currently. So about 2020, it was a lady's dream, a very supportive church. It was a risk that would have made those signing the lease uncomfortable at the time. We have a shed, concrete walls and a tin roof, first at Tugger and then at Morissette. The Adrop shop Morissette was born, but there were still lots of questions. Maybe some hesitation. How will we pay the rent? How will we get the stock? Where will the shelving come from? How do we get the rubbish out? And where will we get the volunteers? Fast forward four years. You can see the, the op shop in the pictures. Have we got the pictures up there? Yep. Thanks, Al. Uh, thanks, guys, at the back. 2,000 square metres of internal floor space, 350 square metres of outdoor undercover area, 36 car parks, a Pantech truck for deliveries, a tip truck to go to the dump, a box trailer for customer and volunteer use, 180 plus registered volunteers, 63 volunteers in one day. That's a lot of people who just show up to volunteer and give their time in one day. Not to mention the thousands of customers that just come through Regular customers, they come in sometimes two, three times a week just to see the stock change. We, we take away about 700 cubic metres of rubbish to the dump down to the tip each year. An annual turnover in excess of $1 million this year will do. Project funding since the shop began put $1 million back into the local community and, and further afield. We put, put uh, food, education, counselling, housing refugees, scholarships, the list just goes on. We get that many projects, sometimes we can't keep track of what we're actually funding, so we now have a projects team to look after that. There are still a lot of questions back in 2020 they probably didn't ask themselves. What if the op shop does do well? What, is if, what if it was successful? What and how do we distribute the money? These are questions we never thought about would, would become possible. Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory of Jesus Christ. So how good was God when he saw this op shop, op shop come along? He, he blessed this op shop many times over. We must thank Kaz Foster, the lady with the dream, the vision. We must thank Hillview Church for the support it provided in, in making that dream come true. Without Kaz and Hillview, this op shop would not be here today, making a difference to mo so many people in our community. And it's not always uh, the money we make I believe the money we create is secondary. I'm seeing a bigger plan of how this op shop now is community, how we're taking church to the community. So what, what we do is actually meet the people where they're at in the community. Also seeing our volunteers support one another. Um, a couple of weeks ago we lost a volunteer called Lo Lois to pancreatic ca cancer. And it was just amazing seeing how the volunteers all rallied around each other to support one another through that. And just recently, uh, yesterday, they had a memorial service for her down at Waihee and there was probably 150 people. There was people from the Adrop shop and Waihee hub where she uh, volunteered her time. So it was just amazing to see that support go further afield. Um, you'll know Lois when you meet her in heaven because she'll be the one with purple hair. <laughs> <laughs> there is a slogan at the op shop. What's the loving thing to do? And that's thanks to Paul Rankin. That was one of his introductions. So that's one of our guiding principles we use every, every time. We now other, we partner with other community groups to carry on the good work. Um, so we deal with Samaritans, Salvation Army, a lot of other groups networking further afield. I even hear one pastor say, just to quote him, he says, I trained all my life to try to connect with people. He said, all I do at the op shop is show up and they land in my lap. I don't have to do too much. So I see we're at the coal face of meeting people where they're at. Here's a, here's a message that just come last week. We often get, um, when people buy things they can, uh, and register their phone number, they get a receipt, they can actually reply. And this was one reply somebody sent in. You are my therapy. Glad you acknowledge your fallen, fallen comrade. You know you care, or sorry, we know you care. 
Wonderful tribute, without realising it. I'm sure you have made a difference to so many people in the area and beyond. I'm a regular, but talked to two young women yesterday, first-timers, who were walking around in a dazed state. They could not believe what they were seeing. One said she had moved into a new home, so they had no money and was blown away by the fact that she could buy so much for so little at the shop. Your staff are phenomenal, and I feel their very caring attitude rubs off on every shopper that comes here. Bravo, well done, Adra community. I would be interested in how many scholarships you were able to fund in the last year. Thank you again. By the way, I was not a committed op shopper until I went to your store, but now my daughter tells me that is very good addiction. I'm a carer for my husband, so my couple of hours a week there is my respite. Thank you for what you do. So that was a message that a lady sent. So I've come to realise and see myself the op shop is a community. It's a safe place, a caring place. It's a healthy environment, lots of good exercise with no subscription fees. You don't have to pay to come there. <laughs> Floor space is at a premium. Um, often you just want to talk and engage with somebody and you get pushed aside. We just don't have enough floor space, amazingly. Um, and I like to be fruitful with my time. I like to see value for what I do and I find that comes out of the op shop. I don't like to sit on my hands. Also, um, always like it when we need something to be done, that people fall in your lap there with a the skill set. Last week, um, uh, I was sitting down having a cup of tea with a new volunteer. She'd only been there for a day and Adra had actually introduced a new work health and safety plan and, and I was talking to her and I like to find out what they did in their past life and she said, oh, I did work health and safety and risk management. I said, fair enough, straight up the office, let's go and get the paperwork <laughs> out. Shove that off my desk. You know, so God provides and, and she just felt so good afterwards being able to use her talents and skills. So that was just another story. But we must thank ADRA also for the support they provide for running the shop and also taking the leap of faith when they sign the lease in the building. So thanks for your time and thanks for supporting the op shop. Well, Theo's done it again. He's, everything on the first page has all been said, so that's, <laughs> that's done, so that's fine. I have to tell you, my morning prayer is not 5.30 anymore. It's 1.30 in the morning when I wake up and all these brain waves go through. And my prayer is, God, give me energy for the day. And I have to tell you, it happens. I walk into that op shop and doing, I can go all day. I come home at the end of eight or nine hours, sit in the recliner and I can't move. And I, it's just the most amazing thing. I, I really want to thank, is Paul Rankin here? Yeah, Paul was our manager for three years and he was the most empowering manager. And Theo's doing just as well. So good things, Theo. But I just want to thank Paul for that. <laughs> Theo's talked about Lois. I, I could go on all afternoon for you, but I know you're in a hurry to get home and have a nap. So <laughs> a, couple of a couple of stories I'd really like to tell you. Yeah. Just after we started, a lady collapsed and I have this theory that I'm not going to resuscitate someone over 70. Now I'm over 70, I might go a bit higher. <laughs> but, and this lady comes and she, she really, I thought I'd lost her. And every time she comes in to the op shop, she says, the lady who saved me. And I said to her, but remember, I whispered in your ear, I wasn't going to resuscitate you. And she came too, see, so... <laughs> Then a mother came to me the other day and she was nearly in tears and she said, Bev, I want to thank you and Elle. And I said, what for? And she said, you took on Charlotte. Charlotte was a quiet, timid girl, didn't want to go to school. <laughs> it was the most... And Elle took her under her wing and she said, today Charlotte is in TAFE, she's got a job and she said, thank you so much. So that gives me a buzz. I mean, I just love those things. The next day... Another lady came to me and she said, you know, Bev, she said, if our son hadn't been working here, he wouldn't have had the reference and now he too has a job. I have this dream, and a huge dream, that we can get lots and lots of young people working at Adra Op Shop. It's just, they can put it down as experience. Got three young university students, just started Avondale, have come in 
and I said, you can come any time, whether it's an hour or two hours. Last Sunday was one of our busiest, busiest days. We had 657 sales, and if you realise what a sale is, a sale is when someone comes with stuff, and they usually have a partner, and they have two or three kids. So we had over 1,500 people go through those walls. And we were going, these three girls walked in and took over, it was amazing. The other thing I love is Pastor Les is really involved. You know, when I used to be a nurse at Toronto Private Hospital and Pastor Graham Scott used to come in, I used to feel so happy because I'd take him around to all the patients. That's how I feel about you, Les. And I really appreciate that. The customers, and they just love him. He didn't want to be called Pastor Les, but I think, nah, forget it. He's Pastor Les. So, so no, I really appreciate that. Last Sunday was an interesting story. A little girl lost five dollars and she was in tears and mum came down to me and she said, oh, do you think we could, you know, see if we can find it? And because of Theo, we've got music through the silly shop. I mean, <laughs> silly music through the shop. And any excuse that I can turn that thing off is, is really good. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so I, we made the announcement that this little girl had lost five dollars. Well, it wasn't long and another little girl came up with the $5.60 and she said, here, I found it. But do you know what touched me? One of our customers and one of the, that person is sitting in this audience came over to give her a reward for returning it. By the time I took that $5 to the little girl who had lost it and the tears were down her face, another customer had given her another $5. And I thought, we've got wonderful people in our community. We really, really do. And so it goes on and on, and I just love it. Yesterday I received a message from one of our volunteers, not an Adventist, and this was part of it. I am so passionate about the shop, it's in my blood. I love helping people, caring for people, it's family. I'm going to be coming in more and more to help out. My job in life is, is the ADRA shop. Now, folks, you're all welcome, but we do need some strong men. Thank you. Corina, I think it's so important to realize the power, a thought that I've been having, just the power of the aggregate, the power of starting something, starting somewhere. And Corina, you've got a story to tell of how you began with a vision of some markets and how that yeah. grew into something. You want to share that vision? Sure. I'm kind of relying on you asking me questions right. about it because I haven't written anything That's down. Okay. Not organized like you. <laughs> Um, I, I guess we, um, when I was first approached um, to talk today, we were um, we had the markets in mind, and uh, that sort of, um, I guess I don't know. I can't even explain how it really rolled out, but it just kind of happened. You would have had a vision, yeah, to did. start something in the community. Yeah. To engage with people is that something that you started by yourself or were there other Hillview okay. members that began the journey with you all right so um, I think it was at the time I was looking after Mark's mum and I had a bit of I had a dream I literally um, woke up in the middle of the night and I thought how am I gonna make this happen it was a dream of a live nativity and it all happened in the courtyard out there mm. so then that sort of started and I thought how are we going to get the people here so then um, the market uh, sort of came about and the market we we I ran over to the church to make it in time for a board meeting one night mm. and I said to them I can't I haven't got long I need to tell you about this dream I had and then if you approve it I'll organize it and if you don't approve it I won't ever talk about it again so they kind of gave me a yes in a very very short amazing. amount of time amazing. we had three markets um, September October November and then we had the live nativity and the night markets which went for four nights in a row and all the church came together and worked out really well so Wonderful. Another word of affirmation to Corinna. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. I 
think, I think also too, um, it, it really wouldn't have happened without the Hillview Church members and the family that, that I have who were here at five o'clock in the morning, every morning setting up and building and it was nothing like the live uh, the stable door. It was sort of really little um, and it all happened out here in the courtyard. I think it was the very first time I met you too. One time you were rocked up to do something in it. And there you go. So many people helping and um, yeah. Every, as you can see in the photos. Mm. Well, Karina, we are so grateful that God can, has used you to mm. start something that has grown into something bigger. Yeah. From little things, big things come. Amen. Yeah, right. From humble beginnings. So thank you for all yeah, that you've all done. Right. I think it was Kaz Foster who um, had the little um, the container out there. She started the op shop for Adra out there in the markets. Yeah. That's where it started. That's where it started. Yeah. There you go. I'm hearing yeah. comments that people are now realizing the connection from little things, big things yeah. do develop. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Just before I announce the, the special item, I just want to resonate with the words that Bev used from this particular client who whispered, You saved me. And can I just reiterate, our presence in the community is life-saving. If you believe that, can I hear you say? Amen. Our presence in the community is vital. Vital connections, making those meaningful connections in the community. Adra, Upshop, different ministries, saving people's lives one item at a time, one piece of clothing at a time, one toy at a time, one smile at a time, one doll at a time, one watch at a time, saving lives, bringing dignity to the community. I'm not going to announce the special item, little as much, when Jesus is in it. When Jesus is in it, little as much. Uh, Benton, Benton Craig and family, your time. God bless you. Hello, church. Uh, our family had the privilege of being part of the Hill com community, Hillview community, probably about a decade ago now is when we, we found ourselves moving uh, elsewhere. And to be honest with you, this has been, uh, this long lives in our memories already as a church of community, a church where so many people spoke into our girls' lives at the time. And uh, it was a wonderful privilege to be part of uh, the journey of Hillview in this 50-year celebration today. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, side note, we've never done this as a family before. Uh, some of you might, might know or remember I used to conduct a choir uh, at Avondale School. We came here a couple of times and sang. Tiani was in the choir. Um, you know, we've just had a number of... Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I've sung individually or with my girls but never uh, all together except once at Castle Hill Church and Beck's joining us so Abby's our youngest Megan's our eldest and George is our, our middle and we're delighted to sing for you this afternoon in a very random but wonderful opportunity from Sabelle so thank you uh, little is much what a powerful message and I hope that that resonates with you, just as we've listened to the stories of what small things have happened, what contributions happen in a community when everyone just puts a little bit in. So, enjoy. In the harvest field now ripened, there Has ended, hand down. 
is one well he will say if you've been faithful You guys, you guys can come back anytime. You, you can actually move here. Thank you for that wonderful reminder. Little as much when Jesus is in it. Um, next up, we will be privileged by viewing a video uh, that was actually prepared several years ago to share the personal, to share the personal outreach that Hillview has been involved with um, a year, years back. Members have always been involved in some sort of outreach, and so we'll be privileged with just viewing the I Will Go video. God bless you as we watch the video. Drowning in the scowling sea, a sea of loneliness and pain, confusion, hurt, worry, shame. I'm holding out my hand, and yet they don't hear me call their name. I want you to be the one to tell them that the kingdom's come and give them all. been given by the sun Will you go wherever I lead Be light in the dark and be soft in the stream Will you So someone else I can't go I'm too afraid I want you to be the one To tell the man The kingdom's come And give them all the Truth and joy You've been given By the sun When you Yes, some will cover their 
Thank you, AV boys. That video just highlights some of the personal and also church missional programs that Hillview has been involved with. What do you say? We are a missional church. Another way of celebrating mission is through the CHIP program. And Dr. Trevor Hello and many that are in this audience have been involved with that. I see, I see faces, I see nods. And so Trevor is away at the moment, um, but he's left a video for us to um, view. God bless you as we view this video. Greetings. My name is Trevor Herlow and along with my wife Lenora, we've been members of the Hillview Church since 2018. I've been team leader of the amazing Hillview Health Team for most of this time. We are currently in South Africa and we wish you a wonderful 50th anniversary as you celebrate on April the 13th. Somebody may ask, what is the connection between a church that also runs a health program? And so I believe the main reason why we run this program is because we believe in the concept of a creator God we made and designed with incredible complexity by an amazing creator. And from this comes the concept that a designer has a plan as to how we can best care for his creation. A lifestyle and diet based on what is best for us is not only healthier, but is also better for the land and the environment. Also, knowing that God is a God of love leads to a wider understanding that he cares for us and he's interested in our health and happiness not only for us but also this extends to our community through health outreach. The Adventist Church has a wonderful legacy of understanding and guidance in the health arena and I'll share some of the quotes from the founders on this issue. From a book Ministry of Healing we read Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. Interestingly, an article in 1866 by H.J. Wagoner 
We do not profess to be pioneers in the general principles of the health reform. The facts on which this movement is based have been elaborated in a great measure by reformers, physicians, writers, physiology and hygiene. And so it can be found scattered through the land. But we do claim that by the method of God's choice it has been more clearly and powerfully unfolded and is thereby producing an effect which we could not have looked for from any other means. Another quote from a book called The Testimonies, page 71 to 75, speaks about this as well and it says the medical missionary workers are doing, interestingly, the long neglected work which God gave to the church. In order to be carried forward aright, the medical missionary work needs talent, it needs strong willing hands and wise discriminating management. So what does this look like at the Hillview Church? Over the past 10 years we have run eight successful CHIP programs accompanied by cooking demonstrations and just by the way, CHIP is an evidence-based lifestyle intervention designed to prevent and facilitate the reversal of common lifestyle diseases. The program has generated over 40 published scientific papers showing a measurable impact on clinical results. Now we have followed these programs up with regular club CHIP programs. These have been very successful and we were delighted when the late Dr. Hans Diel, founder of CHIP, described our Club CHIP program as, listen to this, the best in the world. This is largely due to our committed, capable and passionate team providing great coaching support, a sense of social connectedness and amazing food. This was fostered by dividing the participants into groups of five led by a table host. Each group became like a family supporting each other during the program and competing with each other. And they also communicated through texting and phone calls. And not only then, but this has been ongoing. The friendships formed and the peer support is further enhanced as they meet for the club chip get-togethers. We've also had annual Meet the Doctor evenings and men's health programs and attendance at these programs has varied from 40 to over 100 participants. The feedback and success from these programs has been extremely rewarding and encouraging. As we celebrate all the ministries that are here at the Hillview Church I wanted to express a special thanks to the health team for making possible what we've shared with you today. And so I wish you God's richest blessing and may the Lord continue to lead and guide and we give Him the honour and the glory as we celebrate together. God bless. I'll let the good doctor know that you applauded health and you applauded the CHIP program. There used to be a saying, I don't know if that slogan is still true, once a pathfinder, always a pathfinder. You've never heard that saying before? If you have, once a pathfinder, always a pathfinder. Can I see by show of a hand or even standing up? Those of you who've been involved either with the Hillview or the South Lakes Pathfinder Club, can you show by standing up or raise? Yeah? Why don't you, how about you stand up? If over the years, look at that, you've been involved one way or another, those that are sitting, just look around. And how about we give them a warm round of applause? Thank you. You may be seated. Pathfinders has always been an important part of Hillview Church. From our beginnings, when the children from the Lindbeck, Ulrich, and Palmer families, along with others, joined with the Avondale College Club, to when we commenced our own Pathfinder Club, under the capable leadership of people like Barry, Medland, Margaret Till, and Barry Plain. Hillview has always recognized the, the, the value of the Pathfinder program. I realize that I'm mentioning names 
that some of you might not know. Some of you know these names. And this is what this occasion is about. It's about remembering, amen? Reflecting on our past, focusing on our future as well. Today, some of those involved in Pathfinders are going to share a bit of their stories, their journey in Pathfindering. So I'll invite Barry Plain, I'll invite David Sherratt, and I'll invite Jonathan Christian to come up. this afternoon. These gentlemen have been involved, if you could just pick a mic, gents, have been involved with Pathfinders one way or the other. Barry, David, and Jono. I'll start with you, Barry. You, how, when were your years of service at, at, at Hillview? Do you, do you want my sharing? Well, I'm not a historian. But Marg and I, my sister Marg and I, actually were involved in Pathfinders at the village when we also were members at Hillview Church. When the, the idea came that we would run our own Pathfinders, even though the village club was a very successful club with lots of people. But so we came when we'd worked together in the village. And um, I, I can say just one thing. Thank you. And it's sort of been mentioned before. There's boys and there's girls, and there's girls and there's boys. Now, um, we complemented each other. Marg was a person that chased the, the, the Pathfinder honours, one after the other, as many as you can get. And that was a bit like playing school, and she'd lose the boys. And even when we were in the village, that grew, there was more boys, there was more girls than boys. And I sort of knew that from school, that playing school is a girl's thing. Okay. And so Mark appealed to the girls, and they did a lot of honours and a lot of good honours, and a lot of the boys dropped out. And so we saw that same seesaw effect in Hillview Club, where the, the boys would get a bit naughty and they would drop out and they wouldn't come because they didn't like playing school at school and at church as well. <laughs> so I, I became sort of a complimentary thing to my sister and through her agreement we decided that once a month at least we would get out into the country, not just outside playing games, not just inside playing games, but get out into the country where there's hiking, camping, canoeing, sailing, cycling, 50 kilometre cycling things. And so we, we constructed every year a program there. There was one outdoor activity um, in the club pro um, yearly program. Amazing. The boys came back. <laughs> Amazing. And um, Boys are back in town. Same experience yeah. I had at school where there was all the other classes going on English, maths and all that, and they'd come down to my department and it wasn't school, it wasn't playing school. Amazing. We thank you, Barry, for sharing that memory. Uh, yeah. David, do you have a memory of Pathfinder that you would like to share? I was one of those boys, and uh, most of my Pathfinder time was with Barry as a leader. And, um, yeah, amazing. It was good fun. Can I just share as well that in a camp that we, what camp? That, can, that cave in camp, what was that called? Yeah, the Time More Caves. Yes, I think what I resonated with that particular camp is that years before, David actually took Jonah to that particular camp, and then I was privileged to witness their conversation when Jonah led that particular group, and I thought, it's a wonderful intergenerational ministry, isn't it? From Barry to David to Jonah, and do you want to share any of your, any favorite memories or experiences? Um, yeah, well, Time More Caves is one of them. And uh, there's some photos that should be coming up of me as a Pathfinder. But one of my Can I just acknowledge Kevin? Sorry, Kevin, just his photo was on the photo. Kevin, mate, if you are here, we acknowledge your presence as well in the Pathfinder ministry. Thank you for your years of service. Um, one of my big memories is um, camperees. Uh, that's what I've really enjoyed. But, like, taking the kids out to caves, places that these people before me have taken me and showing the next generation, the Pathfinders. So that's actually one of the early camperees that I went to there um, and an investiture, so yeah. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. I believe, and oh, I'm pretty... Sorry, Les. Go ahead. Go That's ahead. Um, the Teens Great North Walk. We started in Sydney and found shopping trolleys and pushed our packs instead of carried them. <laughs> fun times, fun times. Another memory worth sharing that you've been able to create, Jono, is the famous song. Do you want to speak about that for a, half a second or so? Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I can't. Um, I wasn't planning to talk about this, but we somehow it's developed in that Pathfinders now on the first camp of every year is a talent, no talent night. So as the director, I stood up the front and said, OK, with my guitar, we're going to get ChatGPT to write a song. Um, what's the inputs? Pineapple, toxic waste. <laughs> so ChatGPT put together a song with some chords. I modified a few things so that it was singable and then I sung it. Uh, if you want to check it out, it is on YouTube uh, <laughs> under the pineapple song. Um, it's, it's a little bit interesting. <laughs> Thank you. I believe that Pathfinder helps young people in many different ways. Do you want any of you gents want to just highlight ways in which Pathfinders help the young people? Um, in one of the slides that I had, there's a, there's a quote, and I think Jeff Parker sums it up pretty good. Um, and it's, Jeff Parker puts it, Pathfinders is the best mentoring program that we can offer as a church. The intergenerational connections that are created impact the life of Pathfinders. This informal mentoring cannot be underestimated. It is truly life-changing. And Jeff Parker said that. And at the last camp, we, we had kids make decisions to get baptised. Praise the Lord. Pathfinder Ministries, ladies and gentlemen, truly life-changing. Amen. Now, I need to mention here that many of our Pathfinders have gone on to become Pathfinder leaders and helpers elsewhere, um, included uh, Claire Ashby, formerly Walker, Ineka, Nerinks, Martin, Braden Oliver, and Braden Blythe. In our own church, we have many young people. We cannot even begin to estimate the number of hours that dedicated people have put into the Hillview Pathfinder program, but we thank God for each of you gents. We thank God for those that have led in different areas of Pathfinder. So how about we give these gents a round of applause? Thank you. Please, can I, can I just ask Barry one question before we leave? Yes. Do you recognise that tent, Barry? I recognise that tent. We cut it up in that shed out there. <laughs> <laughs> so that shows you how long that tent has been around Pathfinders. We're still using it. We used it at our last camporee. So Wonderful. thanks, Barry. It lives on. I'm going to ask that you indulge me. We're doing well on time. And indulge me and help me pretend that I am back home. When we celebrate back home, we sing songs. Amen. Amen. The love of Jesus is so wonderful. It's so high that you can't get over it, and it's what? And it's what? I've lost my voice a bit. Pastor Fred, once in a while, I know you're a singer. Is this one song you could lead us in? The love of Jesus. Anybody else who wants to come along? Come and, come and join Pastor Fred. Anyone else? Yes, my beautiful wife with whom I'm well pleased. The love of Jesus is so wonderful, the love of Jesus is so wonderful, the love of Jesus is so wonderful, the wonderful love of Jesus is so wonderful, the love of Jesus is so wonderful, the love of Jesus is so wonderful. One more time.
Amen. Another amen for my wife. I never get to thank her in public. It's one of the perks of being a pastor. Sorry, Fred, I love you too, but there's no competition. There's never any competition. Um, I'm going to pay a penance for those that I know. If I embarrass my wife, I get to do ironing for the whole week. So it's, all right. it's one of the uh, happy ironing. It was worth it. All right. One of the things, one of the things that we do at church camps, I think singing music and just having social events, a church that not only prays together, but plays together, stays together, and grows together. Amen? And so over the years, there's been a number of, of church camps um, that Hillview Church has invested in, has invested money in recognizing and bringing people together in, in a social environment. You, you learn many things at a church camp about people that you wouldn't otherwise know at a particular setting like this. Amen? If you want to get to know the church better, get to know Robbie, get to know Wendy better, <laughs> Get a church camp and just let people, uh, and let their hair down. Marty, Baba, Marty, when I go to church camps, I let my proverbial hair down as well. And I just, just be comfortable. So I'm going to invite, I'm going to invite Patty. Um, she's going to speak and highlight um, one or two items about church camps. Patty, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. You've got notes or you want me to... I have got a few notes, yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say, going off this a little bit, Pathfinders, I came into the church through Pathfinders as a, a young girl, um, and my father came into the church. He wasn't an Adventist along the way. Because of Pathfinders, he used to bring a truckload of kids into Taree um, from out in the country um, to go to Pathfinders. And... Therefore, my husband and I um, brought our children up through Pathfinders and we are great, great believers in Pathfinders and support you, our church, in that area. But, um, well, I'll say good afternoon to everyone. My name is Patty Woolley and my husband's Rodney and um, we were have been involved in Hillview Church for over 45 years um, and that goes back not quite to when we were going to the church when it separated from the college church. We then made a move to New Zealand but came back and Hillview was already built. We came back in the late, um, in late 77 or 8 or something and we've been members here off and on most of that time. Uh, I'm going to share with you memories of the church camps that I have attended. Some of the camp organisers have been Alvin Christian, Trevor Oliver, Rodney and David Woolley, with many more involved in the organising of these camps. The camps I um, have great memories of are three we had in Crosslands um, in 2013, 2015 and 2016. The next one was at Riverwood Down up in the mountains and then the last one we had I believe was in 2018 which was at Tali uh, which is up past Karua on um, Nelson's Bay at the end of Nelson's Bay um, and that was run by Trevor and Helen Oliver. Uh, unfortunately that has been the last camp that we have had that I can recall because what came along? The dreaded COVID and so everybody's life was turned upside down and um, there was no more church camps since then. As I look back on the movies and the photos and reminisced, during the last few weeks, I've been through a lot of emotional feelings. A lot of those feelings were that a lot of those people aren't with us anymore, um, and that's quite sad, but the wonderful time we all had in those camps was just amazing. Uh, it was a wonderful opportunity for our church families to come together in a social as well as a spiritual way, to get to know each other better, stopping to have a chat with someone you normally don't come in contact with when you're at church. We share spiritual infilling with, from great speakers, sharing, singing, music, game playing, concerts, 
Of course, there's always great time sharing food together and even working and sharing moments in the kitchen. Many bonds are formed during all these moments. For me, I want to say my greatest joy was when we were so blessed to be allowed to take our three grandboys with us. Now, what parent lets grandparents take three boys to church camp? <laughs> Marty agrees with me. Great idea, eh, Marty? <laughs> yes, well, our daughter and son-in-law, Paul and Larissa Chapman, really blessed our lives by letting us take our boys to the six of the camps that we shared. And what a wonderful um, time they had. Um, I know the boys loved the opportunity to come with us. It was the highlight of their year to go with Nanny and Poppy to church camp. They loved everyone we took them to. The photos and the video, video clips they've been going over certainly affirm to me the worth of having church camp. Another of my favourite memories was the flying fox at Crosslands that I think Jonathan um, was uh, responsible for. That was just a delight to see. Even uh, Lebo, 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 Fred's wife, was so funny seeing her come down. <laughs> uh, it was just a joy and she screamed too. Uh, they screamed either with delight or, or terror. I'm not sure which it was. Um, as that initial jump was finally made and suddenly they were airborne, flying with such exhilaration to the bottom. What a fun. Another great memory uh, for me was at Riverwood Down and a group of young people rode the rapids down the river. Amongst them was Christina and Bronwyn Stafford. I was pretty horrified. I think it was Bronwyn was pre seven months pregnant at the time. Nothing stops Bronwyn from having fun. She, I was just watching the video of it the other day and I was nearly passing out because she hit a rock and then she went over this and then nearly tumbled. I think she fell out actually. Um, but I just want to say to you, our church family, church camps are truly, truly worth having. And I don't know if it's on the plans for our church to... Um, continue with having church camps but I certainly hope we do because I want to tell you it is so much fun for us old ones and the young ones as well. Thank you. Thank you Patty. You spoke so well and emphasis on the intergenerational benefits of a church camp so thank you for those words of wisdom. We will now be favored by a video um, by Alvin Christian. He's been involved with Pathfinder Ministries for many years, and I think it'll be a great honor for us to now view this video. My name is Alvin Christian. I was privileged to be Pathfinder Director from the beginning of 1992 through 1996. During that time, our club peaked at 80 Pathfinders, which made it a bit of a challenge to find campsites where we could camp well over 100 people. I must pay tribute to my staff. My staff were absolutely awesome, but then so were the kids. I still refer to them as my pathfinders. We had some really great times. I would never trade those times, and while pathfinders cost me a lot of time and money, would I do it again if I was asked? Yes. We had some great camps, having church programs in caves and overhangs, out in nature, what more can you want? Canoeing up the Barara River at Crosslands on the incoming tide, having lunch and church right at the head of the river and then canoeing back as the tide went out. An awesome day. Our guest speaker asking the pathfinders if they wanted to give their hearts to God and be baptised, then seeing the baptisms of several of my kids, including my own son, Jonathan. I have been proud to see several of my Pathfinders carry the flag and continue on in Pathfinders as leaders. Claire Ashby up in Caboolture, Inika Needham in Port Macquarie, Jonathan here at Hillview, and Tiani as a counsellor. 
There's others too that I've met at Camperees where they've been helping to run various parts of the Camperee. It's made me very proud of my Pathfinders. Is Pathfinders worth it? I see, a great, uh, see it as a great outreach program. I see it as a way to train our kids, teach them skills they're not likely to learn elsewhere, and above all, make that connection with God. What a wonderful time. Can I just acknowledge, not only is it a wonderful time, but it's also a time, it can also be tear-jerking, considering all those that were in the photo who are no longer with us. And I'm wondering, is there anybody who would like to join me up front, Pastor Danny, and just say a prayer? Any volunteer? Um, just to pray, particularly for Alvin, who's in hospital. I think it's the kind thing for us to do as a church, isn't it? We can stop the program, alter the program for a prayer, not only for Alvin, but for those who are unwell, who are not with us. And let's think of the families, family members um, who've just seen loved ones and are remembering them. Let's acknowledge that. So I'll invite Pastor Danny to, we're almost at the end of our program. The next little section will be the last one. Um, so please bear with us. It's taken us 15 years to get here. You can spare us a few minutes. Thank you, Pastor Les. Let's pray. Father in heaven, 
We want to thank you for today. Father, we recognise that today, first and foremost, is all about you and your goodness, your grace and your mercy and your love to this church over the past half a century. Father, we right at this moment want to acknowledge those men and women that have been on the front lines, Father, of this initial work. Father, we think of the many who are resting, now waiting for the sound of the trumpet. There are some who are here, and we thank you for them who were here from the very beginnings of this movement. But Father, many, if not most, are now resting, Father, waiting for that day. And Father, we ask and pray that you will enable us through the power of your Holy Spirit to hasten the day when the trumpet, that heavenly alarm clock will sound, that we may all be reunited again. And what a wonderful day that will be, that grand and great reunion in the heavenly courts above. Father, we think of those who are not able to be here, that are spread far and wide, not only in this wonderful, great south land of ours that you have blessed us to live in, but Father, who are further afield, those who may be other parts of the world far from here and who are potentially watching right now or at a later time that have been part of this Hillview journey. We think of them and we thank you and we praise you for them and for the way that you've used them to, to be part of this incredible fabric that you have put together. We think of those who are not well, in particular our dear brother Alvin who is in hospital right now who is watching. Father, we thank you in particular for his ministry here at this church. Um, in many ways, uh, many things have been mentioned, but Father, one thing that may not have been mentioned, and that is the, the pioneer work of this servant of yours to ensure that those who are not able to be in church are able to be blessed through the worship service, through the live streaming and the videoing that he provided and continues to provide through the work that continues to go on here. Father, we pray for him. We pray for his speedy recovery, and we pray that you'll continue to bless him. So, Father, we want to recognize all, Father, that you have used in a mighty way through your spirit. We thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you have promised to do if we will simply remain faithful to Jesus and follow in his footsteps. So we thank you and we praise you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Danny. For one reason or another, in the past, even for many of us currently, you would have chosen Hillview Church. It could be because of a family member, it could be because of a son, and Hillview continues to be part of your story. I'm going to invite three, four ladies this afternoon who, and, oh, sorry, three ladies and, and one young man um, who are going to share a... I, I do know how to count. <laughs> Let me count. You are reading that, but I can change that. That's what you don't know. <laughs> All right. If you know that you're part of this program, come on up front. <laughs> Is Sarah here? Sarah, are you still here? Sarah, no, no. You want to be the MC or let me be the MC? <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. For, for whatever reason, you would have chosen to be. Now, now let's count. <laughs> no, we won't count. I won't do that to you. Uh, Earlier on, I met Sarah, and how many, how many of you guys know Sarah? You want to say hello, Sarah, just to, come, just, just to make me feel better? <laughs> Thank you. Just pick a mic each. Um, I'll start with the two in the middle. They would happen to be our young people in the church, um, Ellie Mae and Daniel. Let's all say hello, Daniel, and hello, Ellie Mae. A few months back, and maybe it could be a, year, over a, a little bit over a year, what these four have in common, which you guys don't know, I know as the MC, and I must assert some authority. <laughs> You're going to lose it. 
what you guys don't know and I know, they have something in common. Um, who wants to guess what it is, since you guys are so insightful? <laughs> they were all, but who said that? Thank you, thank you, um, Lynn, who's your pastor? They were all baptized here at Hillview Church. Um, I met Sarah outside over lunch because that's what you do at Hillview, do the Hillview thing. And, and Sarah, you shared that, you, you tell the story. When did you start attending Hillview? How old were you when you started attending? Um, I started attending here, I think it was like 1990, I'm guessing. Um, I was about eight years old. And um, we made this our home church. It was my mum and my brother and me. And um, we were here for many years when there was still photos. You know the photos? We had the photos of all the members in the foyer there. And when I was 12, I got baptised here. Amazing. Um, in the front around the back. Amazing. We love Hillview Church and we love those that even get baptised. Anybody else that got baptised at Hillview Church in the audience? Amen, amen. A couple of hands acknowledge those and we celebrate you as well on this journey. Something else happened a few years later when you're a little bit over 12. I don't know how old you were. You don't have to mention how old you were I then. I was over 12, yes, when I got married, <laughs> hopefully. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't do child, child. No, no. Yeah. Um, no, so yeah, I met my husband through Hillview. Um, you met your husband here at Hillview Church? I did. Wonderful. Uh, he was dating someone else at the time. <laughs> that, that wasn't part of the script, I <laughs> And you guys, you got married at Hill, Hillview Church we, as well? We actually, we got married um, by Pastor Ray Dixon when he was here. We did the practice and everything here, but it was lovely weather, so we actually got married outdoors. Amazing. And um, that was in, yeah, 2003, and so it's been Amazing. A Thank you. Thank you for coming back today and celebrating with us. It's been such a blessing. I know, I know this, you might have said this already, but lunch was amazing. I, like Whoever was making lunch, thank you so, so much for your hospitality. <laughs> Fantastic, what do you say? It worked out beautifully. With that kind of talk, Sarah, you can come back. I need members like you here. Look, if you do lunches like that every week. Amen, every thank week. you. <laughs> Ellie Mae, a few months back, you made a decision. What decision did you make about Hillview Church? To get baptized here. Amen. What do we say to Ellie Mae? We love our young people. We love it when they make such decisions. What is it about following Jesus that you love the most? Anything that you can think of? Well, it's a community that we're all sticking together. Amen. I couldn't have said it better. Anytime I need singing notes, preaching notes, I'm going to come to you. Community helps us stick together. Well, Ellie Mae was baptized right here at Hillview Church, and I thought it would be wonderful for us to highlight some of our young people that are part of Hillview Church. Is there anything else that you like about Hillview Church? If you could, apart from the fact that your amazing mom comes here, anything else that you love about Hillview Church? When we first came here, people were really welcoming other than other churches. Amen. Thank you. Look at that. Out of the mouths of young people, powerful truths. Hillview Church is an amazing church, and it's all because of you. Next to you is the one and only Daniel Lowe. I think I love your singing, mate. Anybody else that loves Danny when he's singing? Yeah, you let him know. You tell him that we need to affirm our young people. Every time there's a song that's been done, you stand up, you, you sang with the men today. You held the melody, you made us sound good. Thank you. You made a decision a few, do you remember the date? Or, or like Barry, you're not a historian. Do you remember the dates when you were baptized, no? Uh, July 2, 2022. Wow, amen. Anybody else who remembers their baptism dates? Don't raise oh, a few hands. You made a decision to follow Jesus. What is it about following Jesus that you love the most, Daniel? Um, spending time with God. Amen. Amen. Spending time with God. Isn't, it, isn't that the Hillview way? Amen. Thank you for sharing. Anything else from you, any other of you two guys that you love about Hillview that you like sharing? Um, there are people my age. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm not quite sure if there are people my age. No, because you don't know my age, do you? <laughs> oh, yes, Sibel. Yes, we're age mates. Good age. Um, Sherry, Sherry, you also were baptized at Hillview Church, and you raised two wonderful boys. What's been your experience like at Hillview Church, raising the two boys at Hillview? They have children their own age. <laughs> 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 no, we actually came from Singleton 
We've chosen Hillview twice. The second time we came from Singleton and my kids, my two kids, were actually the Sabbath school, the junior kids Sabbath school. So actually being here is um, with a whole big bunch of kids um, and Pathfinders it was actually really good. Amazing, amazing. You were baptised at Hillview Church. you remember the year? 2016, Pastor Fred tried to drown me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go down far enough, so he pushed me down again. <laughs> Some ministers are trained how to do a good old trip in the fount. Not, I, was, I wasn't going, going down. He was pushing me. If you're not going down, just quick trip. Thank you. You were baptized here. November and 2016. 2016. 16. Thank you. You chose Hillview twice. Look at that. Once wasn't good enough and she came back to Hillview Church. We appreciate having you here. And thank you for making Hillview your home and actually... Um, dying to sin and rising in the newness of life through baptism. Thank you for all that, what that represents. God bless you. How about we give them a round of applause? Thank you. You've come a long really way. Short. You can. Um, I just, um, everything that they said about Hillview being a really welcoming place. Um, we moved here when my dad had just died and um, this was our home and coming here today has just been like coming home. So I just wanted to say thank you. I know this is not scripted or anything like that. So thank you guys. Um, even the people I don't know, I feel like I'm I'll still coming Pastor home to Nuch you. to come and give her and a pastoral hug if you don't okay. mind. No? Um, but also um, like just seeing today my mum on the screen and it's so special and just, yeah, lately... Um, Sorry. Um, you guys are beautiful and you have something that is unique and special at Hillview. And just somebody who hasn't been here for years, it, you, it's still the same. And don't ever lose that specialness and that uniqueness. God is blessing you and you're doing amazing things. I, I just wanted to say thank you as somebody who's been here before that this is still a place you can come home to. Thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable in front of us, and we appreciate that. I heard a songwriter say, tears are a language God understands. He sees you, and he gets you, and he understands you. I'm going to invite the gents to come up front, and together we're going to sing our final song, Side by Side We Stand. It's not a particular choir. If you know this song and feel impressed to join Pastor Keith, side by side we stand awaiting God's command. The invitation is open.
Thank you, gents. You may be seated. We'll just do the benediction and... How about that for a prayer? Pray that we all will be there. Amen? I pray that each and every one of us will be there. I don't know if, that's your, if you can make that your prayer as well. Stories are us. We've celebrated 50 years of Hillview Church. And I just want to affirm and acknowledge that I stand on the wonderful memories, the work that many have put into this church. It's such a joy. It's a privilege to affirm one another. It's a privilege for us to share stories and just enjoy memories. If there's anything that I can share with you this afternoon, if there's a lesson that I'd want to share with you on behalf of Hillview Church, let's keep prioritizing people. Amen? Let's keep prioritizing people and making people first, putting people first and making people important. The people that we saw here are the people that we remember. Just have one verse. I could do three if I can, but I'll do one. I'll just have one verse, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's quickly go there. And then we will say benediction. It says benediction up there, but it's benediction and charge. <laughs> Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Benediction and charge. Joshua. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you also. No one will be able to stop you all your life. I will not abandon you. I will never leave you. How about that? I don't know what you're hearing in this verse. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you also. No one will be able to stop you all your life. I will not abandon you. I will never leave you. That's an amen moment, Henry. <laughs> Even before you hear where the message, the, the, the thought is going to, this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, those that have come, I share with you the power of the presence of the abiding God. He will never leave you. This is a verse for the brave-hearted Christian. This is a verse for somebody who's about to enter a future, about to go to places that you didn't even think of or imagine. This is a verse about a people in transition. This is a verse about people that are going through stuff in life. Do you go through stuff in your lives? Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you also. And so my charge to Hillview Church, to our visitors that have come this afternoon. My charge is be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. The God who was with us in time past, he'll be with us now, he'll be with us into the future. And so as we reflect, we reflect with great gratitude in our hearts for the work that has gone before us, for the work that is currently happening, for the work that will happen in the future at Hillview Church. The church is in God's hands. Amen? The church is in God's capable hands, just as he was with Moses, just as he was with the many different pastors. He will be with all of us here present, even to the end of time. And Sue and I said, Amen. Amen. Even to the end of time. With those few words, I bless you all. I charge you, remain faithful to God and watch unto prayer. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Loving Lord, what a wonderful time of remembering we have heard. A wonderful time of reflecting on your goodness. We've sung many songs. We've enjoyed each other's company. And Lord, for this, we are grateful. Thank you for Hillview Church. Thank you for the different people that have contributed to making this place a safe and happy place that it is. Thank you, dear Lord, for your word, your abiding word, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And so, Lord, we are grateful today 
because tomorrow belongs to you. We are grateful, dear Jesus, because the future of Hillview Church belongs to you. Now, to those that are in the hearing of my voice, those that are watching online, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you grace enough to remember time past, remember the present, remember and embrace the future with optimism in Jesus' name. In his blessed name we pray, amen. amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here today. This is the end of the official program. Spend time. Don't be in a hurry. Um, Sibel might tickle the ivory for us for a little bit. You might want to join around the piano, select a special song. This is me indulging myself. Amen. Just talk to someone. But if you really got to run, if you got to go, we've loved having you here. Come back and visit ever so often. So on behalf of the pastoral team, the leadership of Hellview Church, au revoir. Out of who? God bless you all.